Hey, this is Max here, and in this tutorial, you will learn everything about smart delays in ManyChat. It's a really cool feature, and I will show you what it is, what you can use it for, and I'm going to show you a bunch of cool use cases. So let's dive right in. So first of all, what are smart delays? So a smart delay is actually really simple. It's a block that you can add to your flows to temporarily pause the flow so that you can continue automatically later on. Now, and I think they're especially great to send automated follow-ups, but also to send automated reminders. So they're both great ways to keep your subscribers engaged. Now, then I wanna dive into ManyChat and I wanna show you how to set up a basic smart delay block. So to do that, I created this little flow. So imagine we have this message and six hours after this message, we wanna send this message. So to do that, we have to add a smart delay in the middle. So go over to this icon, go under logic to smart delay, click it and place it in the middle just to keep things organized. And then we have to change the delay duration. So I wanna change it to six hours. And if you want, you can also change it to minutes, for example. So six hours. And then what you can also do is you can make sure that it will not continue, for example, in the middle of the night, because it would be very annoying if people are going to get the second message in the middle of the night, right? So to do that, you have to set a continue time limit. So you check this, and then you can basically schedule between what times the smart delay will send the thing after the smart delay. So the default is eight in the morning and 10 in the evening, but you can also, for example, change it to nine in the morning and five in the afternoon. And if you want, I'm not doing this myself, but if you want, you can also exclude certain days. So if you, for example, do not want to continue on a Sunday, then that's possible, but you really have to keep in mind that you probably want to stay inside the 24 hour window. So it's not so smart to like skip a day, but if you want, it is possible. And then you see here, if you read it, it's really easy to understand. It says, wait at least six hours and then continue between nine in the morning and five in the afternoon on Monday until Saturday. Now, then we have to like basically connect these blocks. So to do that, you go to your first block and then you check continue to another step. Then you click this little circle and you drag it over to your smart delay. And then in your smart delay, you do the same thing again. You drag it to where you want to continue after the smart delay. And that's basically how you set up a smart delay. It's actually really simple, right? Now, then I want to show you some cool examples. So the first thing that I want to show you, and it's actually one of my favorites, that is a four minute follow-up. So the four minute follow-up is a really great way to keep subscribers engaged while they're basically still talking to you. So. Imagine here we invite someone for a workshop on Sunday. So if they say that they would like to take part, then they get a message that says awesome. And then I ask, does 3 p.m. work for you? And it's very important for me, or maybe also for you, that they are going to answer that. Like if they do not answer it, we cannot register them to the webinar. So if they answer, if they say, yes, I'm interested or not, I'm, no, I'm not interested, then in both cases, they're going to get a tag. And this tag we're going to use later on to check if they engaged with this message, basically. So that works like this. So we have this message, and then we automatically continue to another step. So as soon as they get this message, no matter if they like answered or not already, they will continue to the smart delay where we will wait for four minutes. So we're going to wait for four minutes and then we go into a condition. And then inside this condition, we're going to check if the subscriber has any of the following tags. So event clicked yes, or event clicked not really. And those tags, remember, we apply those here. So if someone clicks yes, that works for me, then they get a tag that says event clicked yes. If they click not really, they get a tag that says event clicked not really. And the sole purpose of these tags is this condition, because we want to know, are we going to send a follow up or not? So if they engaged with this message, we know that person, that subscriber has any of these tags. So if the subscriber has any of these tags, then we follow the green line 
and then we remove both tags because the tags have served their purpose and then we stop here. We're not going to continue because they already continued in another point in the flow. But if the subscriber does not have any of these tags within the first four minutes, then we know this person did not engage with our flow yet. So then I'm going to ask, hey, are you still there, Max? And if they say, yes, I'm still there, they go back to this message that asks if 3 p.m. works for them. Now, if they say, I'm busy now, then we just like exit the automation, then uh, they're not interested, right? But this is just like a simple way to show you uh, how you can send a quick four minute follow up. Now, the next example that I wanna show you is how you can send a simple follow up after you, for example, send people to your website. So here's an example. Here I say, perfect, you can watch the lesson by clicking the button below. Now, then you see a little preview of the lesson. They go to the website, two seconds later, I say something like, hey, I will get back to you in about 10 minutes. And then you see that we automatically continue to another step. We drag this one over here, and then we wait for 10 minutes and then continue. And then we send a message that says something like, hey, was the video useful, Max? So just another way to show you how you can use smart delays inside ManyChat. Now the next one, and this one is also really cool, is that you can give people the possibility to ask for a reminder, basically. So here in this example, we ask, hey Max, are you ready for today's lesson? Now, if they click yes, they just get the lesson. And if not, what's cool is that they can click remind me later. And when they do that, they get a message that says, "Ok, I will remind you in four hours, or if you want to continue earlier, just click the reply below. So this works a little bit similar to the first example that I showed you. So if they click, I'm ready, they get a tag that says event clicked ready. Then we automatically continue here into a four hour smart delay, because we said here, I will remind you in four hours. And then after those four hours, we basically check with a condition if the person clicked, I'm ready. Because if that person clicked, I'm ready, that person has this tag. If that person has that tag, we follow this path, then we remove that tag, because again, that tag has served its purpose, maybe you wanna reuse it later on, and then we do not continue because the person already continued themselves. Now, if they do not have that tag, then we know, okay, this person did not continue the flow on their, on their own, so then we're going to send a message that says, Hey Max, here's the friendly reminder you asked for. Are you ready for today's lesson now? And then again, there's the option where they say, yes, I'm ready They get the lesson or remind me later. And then we just go back over to, ok, I will remind you in four hours. And then they just get the same message again. So I think this is a really great tactic to keep people engaged because I noticed myself, I had like a free course in Messenger and I would send the messages at 10 in the morning. And sometimes people just, like get a notification on their phone, they open it and they're like, hey, there's a message from Max. Okay, I will I will look at that later on. And then the later on turns into never maybe, right? So that's why this is so great that they can then click, oh, remind me later, and then they automatically get a reminder. And then the next example is about a lesson follow-up. So it's basically a reminder for people to do that lesson in case they maybe forget. So let me show you how that works. So here, again, like the previous example, we ask, hey Max, are you ready for today's lesson? Now, and then they can click either yes, totally, or remind me later. Now, what we wanna do, if they do not engage with this lesson, we want to send a follow-up six hours later, saying something like, hey Max, just a quick reminder, so you don't miss today's lesson. Are you ready to watch it now? Now, to do that, we have to check if the subscriber clicked any of these quick replies, right? So if they click yes, totally, we add a tag that says event, engage lesson one. And if they click to remind me later, we also add a tag that says event, engage lesson one. So it's a slightly different way of tagging. They both work. You could like say event clicked yes, event clicked remind me later, or you could just use something like this. This is maybe slightly simpler. And then we automatically continue into a six hour delay. And then after those six hours, we check if the subscriber has that specific tag. If yes, we know the subscriber engaged with this lesson, so we should not send a follow-up. So we just go to this action block and we remove the tag event clicks engaged lesson one because that tag has served its purpose. 
Now, if not, then we want to check if we are still allowed to send a message. So we want to check if the, min the messaging window segment is resend interaction. If yes, we follow this line and we just send a regular message, something like, hey Max, just a quick reminder so you don't miss today's lesson. Are you ready to watch it now? Now, then I can click yes, show me or remind me later. And as you can see here, they go into those action blocks again. So if they click yes, then they also get a tag that says event engaged lesson one. And if they clicked remind me later, they also get that tag within a different block so that we can continue to different points inside our flow. And if that's not the case, if the last interaction was not inside the last 24 hours, then we're going to check, are we allowed to send a one-time notification? Because at the beginning, of my course, I'm asking people like, hey, is it okay if I'm going to send you a notification in case you miss a lesson? Now, if that person gave explicit consent for that, we can send a follow-up like this, but it has to be a slightly bit different because a one-time notification has to be in one block. So then I'm saying, hey, Max, and I see that there's a space missing here. Hey, Max, just a quick reminder so you don't miss today's lesson. Click the bubble below to continue. Now, and again, if they click yes, show me or remind me later, then we go into the action blocks where we add those tags. And then in both cases, we automatically continue again into a smart delay. And then we're going to check 17 hours later if they engaged with our lesson. If not, we're going to send a message that says, hey Max, I noticed you missed yesterday's lesson, blah, de, blah, de, blah. Now, so it works like this. We have our 17 hour delay. And after the 17 hours, again, we check if they have that tag. If they have that tag, we go to that action block that is removing the tag. You can see that here. And if not, it works pretty similar again. We check if there was any recent interaction in the last 24 hours. If yes, then we can just send a regular message saying something like, hey Max, I noticed that you missed yesterday's lesson. And if not, but if we still have the one-time notification enabled, then we can send a one-time notification with the same message, but then in like one text block. And if not, then we cannot send any reminders anymore. So what you can do then is you can either use like the email module to send an email, or what I like to do is that I add a tag to Active Campaign, and I'm going to send an email with Active Campaign because it's slightly more advanced what you can do there. But I will save that for another tutorial. So yeah, that's where there's example. So I hope this helps you to understand how smart delays work. The next tutorial is also going to be really cool. It's about ManyChat conditions. So as you already saw in this tutorial, we've already used conditions quite a lot but I really wanna go deep on all the possibilities that you have. So I'm going to give you nine cool use cases for managed conditions. So you see that on screen right now, so be sure to watch that. If you enjoyed this tutorial, give it a little thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you wanna see more tutorials like this.